everyone and welcome to another fabric haul. I know I've done one of these quite recently and in that video I was very apologetic about the quantity of fabric that I'd purchased and I'm still a little bit apologetic about that because that was an unplanned fabric shopping adventure so I felt a little bit guilty about the quantity that I purchased. But this was a very planned adventure. It's become kind of a summer tradition for my mom and I to go up to Pennsylvania and go on a little bit of an antiquing and fabric shopping adventure. There are a few apparel fabric stores in the Lancaster area and there are also a ton, and I do mean a ton, of quilt stores. Though I don't personally quilt, I do really enjoy using quilting cottons for historical garments from the 1700s through to the late 19th century. They're a really nice quality and a nice weight for a lot of more casual historical pieces. And now that I'm making more vintage inspired apparel, I can actually shop for prints that would work in my wardrobe. So it was a really fun trip and I ended up getting a lot of things for a lot of projects that I'm really really excited about. So I hope you will enjoy this video and seeing my purchases, and if you'd like to see more of the trip that my mom and I went on, I I did vlog the whole thing and I will try and have links to those videos in the description box down below. There might even be a separate antique haul coming up too. So that is the end of this intro and I hope you enjoyed the video. So this is the first pile of fabric that I have to share and this was all purchased from the first store we went to which was Fabric Mart. Now as I said in the intro if you want to see more about the shopping experience I definitely refer to my Lancaster vlogs which will all be linked down below. But I didn't actually film a lot in Fabric Mart, so I thought I would just give you a little review within this video. I don't really like the shopping experience in that store because nothing has prices on it, and there are also a lot of people working there and cutting fabric for the online store. So I just end up feeling really awkward and like I'm in everybody's way. There were also no signs up indicating what sales were going on, so I didn't end up purchasing any full price materials just because I wasn't really sure what the cost of them would end up being. But all of these were materials that weren't listed on their website and were reduced down to $1.99 a yard, and then if you bought the full bolt, I believe you got 50 cents off per yard. I guess I'll just start with the one that's on top. This is a quilting cotton, and it feels really, really nice and soft. It's a very high quality quilting cotton, and I really like the colors in this. It reminded me a lot of 1940s prints. I could also see it being used for a dress from the 1950s or 60s. I also like the colors in this, because I feel like the shoes and accessories I could wear with this are pretty versatile, whether I want to bring out the beige tones or the brown tones or the tan tones, or the yellow tones, or the red tones. So I just like this fabric and I thought it would be a good one to pick up. The next material that caught my eye was this polyester taffeta. It's actually got a pretty cool two-tone shift to it for polyester taffeta. But what really caught my eye about this fabric is how it feels. It feels a lot like a silk and that it isn't super stiff and crispy the way a lot of polyester taffetas are. When you gather it, instead of rebelling against you, it actually holds the shape you create pretty nicely. So they had this in the blue and the brown, and I ended up not buying the brown just because it's not a color that I tend to work with a lot. But after feeling this fabric again, I regret not getting the brown too, because I think it's a really nice quality material, uh, and the price on it was just amazing. Speaking of blue, they also had this very lightweight cotton plaid in these lovely shades of blue. And I've actually worked with this exact type of material before, except it was in a greenish beige red color, and I made an 1890s dress out of it. And that fabric was amazing to work with. It was so thin and easy to sew with, and you could gather it down to whatever you wanted without it adding any bulk. So that might be a cool fabric for a very, very full 1950s dress, and at the price point, and in one of my favorite colors, I just couldn't resist it. Speaking of the lightweight cottons. I have 28 yards of 100% cotton wool. And this was another one of their $1.99 fabrics. I purchased the 28 yards for 40 bucks, which I think was an absolute steal. In addition to being perfect for all sorts of foundations, a lightweight cotton like this is also fantastic for early Edwardian day dresses, very casual bustle dresses, or the famous chemise all style from the 1700s. So this is just a really versatile fabric to have in my collection, and to find it at that price point and in this quantity was awesome. So as you can see, I snatched it all up. The final fabric from their $1.99 section that I purchased is this linen look fabric. Actually, it doesn't even look that much like linen, but I really like the texture and the color of this fabric. It's a really nice rosy tone. It has a few different colors of threads in it that are woven somewhat loosely, which makes them visible. I thought it'd be great for a medieval kirtle, either as something to go underneath the dress or something to be a standalone piece with some fancy trim to dress it up. Or maybe I won't dress it up and I'll just make a middle class kirtle for once. And now that I think a little bit more about this, I think this would go really well with one of the blue and pink floral fabrics I purchased in the garment district a month or two ago. 
ago. The last fabric I purchased from them, and the only one that wasn't from that $1.99 section, is a 100% silk taffeta, and this is a pre-cut six yard cut that was reduced down to $5 a yard. And six yards is a really good amount for using it as an underskirt or as a contrasting material for a more elaborate gown. I really like the color of this fabric because it's a gold, but it's on the brassier, kind of more muted, darker spectrum of gold, which I think looks a little bit more expensive and a little bit more historical. In addition to having that beautiful sheen that all silk taffetas have, it has a pinstripe pattern to it, and then on top of it, it has all of these dots that are woven into the fabric. So it ends up just having an incredibly rich amount of texture. It's also worth noting that this doesn't feel like traditional taffeta. It's not nearly as stiff. It feels almost like a shunting. Uh, so I think it'll be much nicer to work with than taffeta usually is. The next store I went into was Lace Place, and Lace Place is another store that I've been into many times before. I'd really suggest you check out the vlog when I was in there because I tried to film a little bit of footage as I was walking around and really show you the extent of lace that they have available. So the first lace that I purchased is this really cool pleated lace trim, and they actually made this in-house um, on some of the industrial machines they have there. So they stitched the lace onto the ribbon and then it was all pleated using machinery that they have there. And I ended up purchasing, I think, 12 yards of this. I'd really want to purchase more and use it to trim an entire bustle dress, but it was quite expensive per yard, so 12 yards was all I could justify this time around. But I think this would be really cool on the hem of a Civil War era gown, as well as around the neckline, or maybe I'll use it on a variety of projects just a little bit at a time. I purchased two other kind of muted tone practical laces from them, and I think I got the final cuts of both of these, and I purchased around three to five-ish yards. Uh, and the reason I purchased these is just because I really like the colors of them. So this one is very yellowish and beige-ish, and it matches a lot of the ivory-toned silks that you can purchase in the garment district. And this one is a darker, kind of peachy oatmeal tone. And again, I have a lot of fabrics in this color, and it's kind of an unusual color to see for lace. So I thought this would, once again, be nice for the cuffs of sleeves or just to jazz up a bodice. This one is really, really neat. So this is an incredibly wide blue lace, and you don't see lace trim that is this wide very often, and I think this one was only $2.47 a yard. So I'm going to try and find a matching blue mesh for this, and then sew it onto the hem of a skirt with an opaque underlay beneath it. And I think that would be really pretty and really easy and really fun. I also purchased two other pastel laces, and the motivation for this color palette are the pairs of irregular choice shoes that I own. So I actually have blue shoes from them now, pink shoes, and purple shoes. So I tried to buy lace that would go with those shoes since I really want to make dresses uh, kind of designed around the shoes specifically to go with them. So that was part of my motivation for getting blue one, and that's also why I purchased this pink one. I also absolutely adore this purple one. Again, similar width, similar design, uh, and a beautiful pastel lilac shade. The next store was Goodville Fabrics, and I made quite a few purchases here. <laughs> Let me start with the smaller rag, which is primarily trim. So as I said, all of these are from Goodville Fabric Outlet. They sell fabric by the bolt as well as by the yard, and they tend to have really good prices. So they had all of these overstock spools or bolts, depending on what you want to call them, and then they were all 50% off. So these read $7.50, they're actually $3.75. A lot of the designs were in colors that I wouldn't really use, though I do kind of regret not getting more of them while I was there. Uh, I talked myself out of a whole bunch of them and ended up focusing on quantity of a single trim instead of getting a variety. So I got five bolts of this satin ribbon ruffled trim. This is a really cool trim. It's got a lot of texture to it. The ribbon is pleated in such a way that it sticks kind of straight up in the middle. When the light bounces off of it, you really see the sheen of it and uh, kind of the unique way that it's been pleated. So I thought this was really interesting, and it was one of the few trims there that didn't look like it belonged on children's pillows. I could actually envision this on an 1880s bustle dress, and that's why I bought so much of it. So I purchased 50 yards of this in total, so I can really go overboard on using it on a specific gown. And then I also purchased a single bolt of this lampshade trim, and this is actually really similar to trim that I purchased for a recent 18th century costume, and I think I paid $5 a yard for that trim, and this whole 10 yard bolt of it was $10. So it's got really pretty kind of brownish beads. And again, this would have looked great with that taffeta that I left behind at Fabric Mart, so shame on me. I also purchased some of their buttons because they have really cute displays of buttons in Lancaster. Uh, so I got just ones in versatile colors and sizes that I felt I'd be likely to use. They also had insanely cheap metal zippers, and metal zippers were the primary zippers used up until the 1960s. And you can still buy metal zippers today, there isn't nearly as much variety as there used to be, and they're also quite expensive. If you go to Joann's, you can 
end up paying five or six dollars for a single metal zipper. So here they have them for between I think 80 cents and a dollar fifty each. So I purchased all of the ones that were in sizes that I thought I'd be likely to use. I ended up with a yellow one, a couple gray ones which I'm going to use for denim shorts, um, a black one, a mint green one, and everything else that you see there. Now onto my fabric purchases. Just give me a moment to arrange this. <laughs> so I guess we can start with the fabric that I regret getting. I saw this uh, right near the front of the store and thought it was really really cute. It's a cherry print fabric but it's a very dense cherry print. I thought this was a neat take on it. I thought it would make a really fun blouse and be a cute way to disguise a very common print uh, with a little bit of an elevated twist. So even though it wasn't great quality, I decided to buy one of the flat cuts of it. So these were three yard lengths, which was perfect for a blouse. So I thought I just picked up one of them, and I was hesitant to even pick up one of them at the price point with how poor it felt. And by accident, I picked up two. So I guess I spent $20 on this cherry print fabric. But that's okay, I can use one of the cuts for mock-up fabric and turn the other one into a blouse. Now, even though I like this fabric and I think the color palette and the print is interesting, I do regret buying this just because I saw so many cherry print quilt and cottons while we were there and a lot of them were nicer quality at a similar price point uh, and in designs that I thought were a little bit cuter and still quite elegant but I do think I'm still going to use them and I still think it's a neat take on that print. Other things I picked up for 1950s slash 40s inspired pieces include these really cute ginghams. So for summer, even though we're kind of nearing the end of it, I purchased this really bright lovely minty teal tone and I got two yards of the smaller gingham and four yards of the larger gingham and I'm going to use this for the main body of the dress and then this for pockets and to trim it. And then since we are getting closer to autumn I purchased this orangey tone and this time around I got five yards of the smaller gingham and then I got a yard and a half of the larger gingham. I actually bought this for a 1940s inspired piece as well and this is two yards of it but I have another bolt which I'm not going to bother getting out which is eight yards of this. So this is a polyester wool blend which is machine washable and that's what really attracted me to it because it's it's so rare to find suitings that I like that are machine washable. And the reason that I like this so much is because it has a lot of texture to it. It doesn't look like the typical Joanne suiting, which are really acrylic-y feeling and flat and smooth and a pain to work with and just don't look very nice no matter what you do with them. This really has some grit to it. It's got different colors of thread woven through it. Uh, it's got a little bit of a slub to it, so when you run your hands over it, you feel that texture and you also see that texture from a distance. But despite having that feeling and that texture, which I really like, it's still quite lightweight uh, and it is machine washable as I said. So I'm planning on using this fabric to make a four-piece-ish uh, suit set from the 1940s. So I want to turn it into a pair of pants, a vest, a jacket, and a skirt. And I think that would be a really fun challenge for me and I would really enjoy the process and I'm really, really excited to work with this fabric. The remaining fabrics I purchased are all quilting cottons, but they're very nice quilting cottons. They feel quite thin and fine and soft, uh, but they still hold their own. They're not like a really flimsy quilting cotton. And I love these fabrics for making 19th century dresses. I feel like they suit the period really well. They often have very appropriate prints and they're just a dream to work with. Uh, quilting cotton really is the best of the best when it comes to cutting and sewing and ironing. They're just a dream compared to most apparel fabrics. I feel like this is very unique as far as colors of quilting cotton go. You don't see this dark bluish purpley tone very often. Uh, which is part of the reason that I liked it so much. I thought this would pair really well with black as far as trimmings go. But you could also use lilac for trimming it and make it a more brighter summery dress. So I really liked this and I purchased eight yards of it. And this would be perfect for anything from 1910 to 1880. And buying eight yards of it means that I could use it for pretty much any of those periods. And it's pretty much the same deal for these two. Though this time around it was the print that attracted me. I like that this was a stripe because that's a very classic cotton print that has been around forever. But it's got little polka dots uh, and almost a chevron print woven into the stripes that makes it a little bit more interesting. And again, this has quite a few different colors in it, so I could choose to pair this with a dark red fabric and make it deeper and a little bit more sultry, or I could pair it with pink and beige tones and cover it with ribbons and make something really feminine and girly. So I love that it has different tones in it to play off of while still being a relatively simple striped fabric. This is the same fabric, just in a different color, and I think this might be my favorite of the lot. I really 
really like green as a color. This isn't even a super appealing shade of green and I still really like it. I just feel like it's a color that looks pretty nice on everyone and since I live in such a wooded area, I feel like green projects always photograph really, really well outside. So I purchased eight yards of this one and then I purchased another fabric from the collection uh, that complements it really well that I could use as a contrasting fabric around the waist or to line the bonnet or to make sleeves or do something like that. All right, so we are officially on to store slash pile number four. So these two piles, they're not even all in frame, are from Weaver's Fabric, which is probably my favorite quilt store in the Lancaster area. And pretty much all of these are with either Sewing Through the Decades projects in mind or just with pieces I want to add to my wardrobe in mind. So you're probably gonna end up seeing videos about most of the materials that I purchased from this place. I think these were all reduced down to $3.99 a yard, whereas the other ones were the full price closer to $8.99. Quilting cottons are quite expensive, so though they're wonderful to work with and they wash really well and they're really easy to sew with, uh, you can find a lot of apparel fabrics that probably have more texture and are nicer weight to wear that are cheaper. But they come in a lot of cute prints, so it's all very conflicting. But anyway, these were a really, really good price, and they still feel really nice too, or at least the top three do. <laughs> the one on the bottom here, which is a green floral, so you can tell why I like it, uh, actually feels quite scratchy, quite similar to that cherry print fabric that I showed you much earlier. But I really liked the colors of this, and I thought it'd make a really pretty dress with some bright white buttons, so I purchased four yards of it. I purchased five yards of this one, and this is what looks like a 1930s feed sack print to me. It's just very bright and colorful, and I really enjoy all of the tones in it. And this feels really nice. It feels like a traditional high-end quilting cotton, except it was at a very low-end quilting cotton price point, which I appreciated. These next two I'm going to use to make simple 1950s rectangle skirts. Throughout this entire trip, I was looking for fabrics that had some sort of vertical print that I could use, because I think that makes rectangle skirts look a little bit more interesting and a little bit more flattering, since you can follow the print down to the hem. I also want to experiment around with cutting one of these stripes out and having that go horizontally across the hem and have the rest of the stripe print going vertically. So I was looking for stripe print fabrics that I could use for 1950s skirts, and I really was coming up empty. Everything was just a little bit more juvenile than I wanted. Uh, but I finally stumbled across these, and they're in really versatile colors for my wardrobe, and I really like the print. And it's quite feminine and girly, since it is a floral, but it isn't as childish as a lot of the floral prints out there which are intended for baby blankets and little girls rooms. So I really liked these and I purchased three or four yards of each of them. I also purchased one Moda print. I was very impressed by myself that I held off on the Moda print since I love their historic prints so much. I just thought this was a really pretty, very subtle fabric uh, that I could use to create a more structured garment and kind of play around with the directional stripes without having it look too over the top. Then I purchased some 30s prints because they had a pretty amazing selection of those. So the one on top I'm planning on using for a dress, and again, I really like the colors in this. It's got red, it's got green, it's got royal blue slash navy blue slash teal slash white, and I feel like it's going to go with everything, and I can really play around with contrasting pockets or piping or buttons or whatever I feel like when working with this. This is a cherry printed fabric, which is part of what made me regret buying the other one. If I hadn't purchased the other one, I definitely would have purchased more of this, but since I'd already dumped $20 into another cherry print, I only purchased two yards of this, which should be enough to make a 1950s style blouse, but not much more. And then I purchased two yards of this stripey cotton, and this goes really well with the cherry print as well as the other two florals I purchased from the shop. And I'm gonna use this to make either skirt or a romper or a pair of shorts. Uh, I think that would be really cute and I could play around with the directions of the stripes and make something really flattering and fun. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this one, but this is one of the fabrics that really caught my eye in the store and it was one that I knew I couldn't leave without. Again, I feel like this has a very 30s-ish flair to it and it has the sweetest looking baby deer drawn on it. And I just love the way this print almost looks like it's been stamped onto the fabric, uh, how bold it is and how cartoonish it is. I just think it is the cutest material ever. I don't know how good this would look as a skirt or a blouse or whatever I choose to make it into, but I knew I couldn't leave the store without it. So I just think that's the cutest fabric ever. Lastly, these were kind of my most debated purchases because I don't really know what I'm going to do with this, but I also really like it. So this is a almost watercolor floral print. I thought it'd make a really cute skirt, but I wouldn't really know how to make an interesting skirt out of this, so it'll probably just end up as a rectangle skirt. 
I'm not sure how much wear I'm going to get out of it, but I just loved this fabric and I couldn't leave it behind. So I purchased three and a half yards of it, which is enough for either a rectangle skirt or to turn into a slimmer cut dress. So whichever I feel I will wear more, I will turn it into. And I purchased a yard of gingham since it matched the golden tones in the daffodils really well. We are nearing the end, but there's still more to share. So this pile is from Zooks, which is another one of my favorite fabric stores in the area. So I have three cuts of quilting cotton from them, and then I have one cut of home decor fabric, which I guess I will talk about first since it is the outlier. I purchased nine yards of this fabric, and it was $3.99 yard. Uh, I was really drawn to this fabric, and I figured it would be too thick for me to actually purchase and use for anything historical, but I, when I walked over and felt it, it felt really nice. So this feels softer and slightly lighter than the $20 a yard damask print Joann's curtain fabrics. So if you've ever felt those, then this is a similar weight, just slightly lighter and much softer. So it's definitely a usable weight for dramatic historical gowns, and I thought the print was a nice scale for that as well. And as I said, this was $3.99 a yard, which you really can't beat when it comes to fabrics of this weight and quality. Next up are two historic prints. Now, the historic prints in these stores are so tempting to me, and there are so many of them. As I said, Moda especially does amazing historic looking prints that are so appropriate for such a wide variety of eras that it's really hard to hold off on buying them, and buying all of them. So as I showed you, I purchased the striped ones in the beginning, and that was kind of it for me. I felt like I had purchased the historic prints that I was going to get on the trip, and they were versatile, and they were in colors that I really liked, and that was all I needed. But then I saw this. And I just loved this. So it has a cream-toned and muted coral pinstriped base, and then over top of it it has these fern things that are in this deep maroon color and this deep blue tone. And I love the colors in this so much. I think it's so interesting having both the blue tones in it as well as the reds and the maroons and the pinks, and I wanted it so badly. And I think all of the fabrics on this rack were $8.99 a yard, except for this one, which had been discounted down to $4.99 for some reason. And then they were also having a sale where all the fabrics were $1.99 off. So it seemed like fate, and I ended up purchasing everything they had left, which was around $7 yards of it. And then I purchased a yard of this fabric just because I thought it complemented it so well. Now I also bought this fabric and I plan to use this for an 18th century gown to go with a model ship that I'd purchased in a store a couple days prior. So for pretty much ever I've wanted to make one of those ridiculous 18th century headpieces that have the ship in them or on them. I just haven't had the right fabric to make a dress to go with one so I haven't been able to justify purchasing one of the ships. But on this trip my mom found one of the little ships for like three dollars I felt like I could kind of get away with using it for an obnoxious 18th century fantasy-ish day ensemble. So I decided to buy that ship, and I knew it had black and cream-toned sails and then a brown base. So I was on the lookout for the rest of the trip to try and find a fabric that would go with it, and I thought this one was perfect. Once I got home, however, and I pulled the ship out, I realized that it had white and blue sails, so I'm now going to have to tea stain all the sails of this stupid ship and then paint the stripes on them to be black, just so it will go with the fabric that I purchased to go with it originally. But that's okay, because I really like the fabric, and I do like the ship, and I got it for a great price. Uh, so I'm looking forward to working with this and making that ensemble. But yeah, it was kind of bittersweet when I got home and I opened up the ship and I realized it wouldn't match the fabric I purchased to go with it. I love it when you find little bits of thread and you just look at them and try and figure out whether they're a dead spider or a piece of thread before you use your bare hands to pick them up. So we are on to the second to last store that I went into, and these fabrics are from the Old Country store, which is right pretty much across the street from Zooks. Oh, well, okay, there's a spider. One moment. I think I got it. So I purchased four cuts of fabric from this store, and they are all by Philip Jacobs for Cafe Facet. So the one on top is from 2011, so it is an older print. I don't know if you can still get it. But it is like a vineyard print, and it consists of baskets that are filled with cherries and berries and plums and peaches and lettuce, and it's a really large print. So from a distance, it just looks like a kind of random floral, but, but then you get up close and you realize there are no flowers. It's all melons and random fruit and vegetables. And I really like the colors incorporated in this and how bold it looks from a distance, while the colors are still quite understated so it doesn't look like too much. So I thought this was a perfectly weird, fun print to turn into another 1950s inspired dress, or a dress of my own design, which might still be 1950s inspired. And I purchased all they had left of that, and I think there was a three yard cut and a two yard cut. And these three cuts of fabric are all the same print, they're just in different colors. So this print 
is cabbage. It's just cut open heads of cabbage and lettuce, and I love it so much. This color is probably the most dramatic, uh, so it has the most contrast in it. There's a beigey toned base with these really bright pops of pink and red and teal. Uh, so I got enough of this one to turn it into a skirt or a pair of shorts, and this one is a lot more vibrant. It's got a base of green, and then it has this kind of electric purpley tone as the contrast in it. So I really liked this one as well, and it does have a little bit of teal and a lighter pink in it too. And then I purchased the largest quantity of this one, which is the most subdued, but I also felt like it was the most wearable. So this one has kind of a grayish taupeish base, and then it has really all the colors incorporated into it. So there's some dark blue, there's some pale orange, there's some light green, there's some dark green, there's some teal, there's some periwinkle, there's some pink. And I really just liked the range of colors in this and also the more subdued palette in general. So I really love that print. If I can find anywhere that stocks it, then I will link it down below because it is so cool and different uh, and it's exactly the print that I was looking for throughout this entire trip. And I'm so glad that I finally found it. So the last store we went into was Log Cabin Quilt Shop. I ended up purchasing two yards of this strawberry print. And again, similar to the floral that I showed you earlier that had the dragonflies and daffodils, I feel like this has a semi-realistic ink outline watercolor effect to it, which I really, really like. So though this is probably a little bit too unrealistically retro themed for me, uh, I did really like it as a fabric and I was worried I would regret leaving it behind, so I decided to purchase two and a half yards of it, which is enough to make some sort of blouse or an apron if I decide this isn't a garment I want to wear in public. And then I purchased 12 yards of this fabric. So as I said, the historic prints in these stores really get to me, and though I like all the colors in them, one of the colors I kept coming back to in every shop that stocked these was the grayish blue. And I feel like this is just the nicest shade of blue. It's like the shade of blue that you see on antique china, and I really wanted to make something out of it. It. But since I'd purchased all the other historic prints, I could just not justify it at eight or nine dollars a yard, especially when I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But then I remembered the show The Paradise, which is what my family is currently watching. And the girls in that show primarily wear these black taffeta uniforms, but there are also a lot of more casual, natural form era day dresses in it. And some of them are made out of these brightly printed cottons. So once I had that idea in my head, I realized that I totally had a project that I could use this fabric for, and I could totally justify buying it. Except I'd already spent my fabric budget, and it was like $9 a yard. And they didn't really have enough of any of the fabrics I liked, except for this one. They actually had three separate bolts that had between, I think, two and six yards on them. And one of the bolts was marked as $3.99, while all the others were marked at $8.99. And when I asked the woman at the counter about it, she said that I could have all of the yardage I wanted from any of the bolts for $3.99. So I ended up purchasing 12 yards, which is plenty to make one of those dresses, uh, and I got the fabric for $4 a yard. Each. So I'm really really happy with that because if it hadn't been for that discount I probably wouldn't have purchased it at all or at the very least I wouldn't have purchased as much. And then I also got a single yard cut of a fabric from the same collection which matches really nicely and brings out some of the deeper tones within it. And that, my friends, is everything that I purchased. So now I'm going to cut to the outro because I've got 15 seconds left before this stops recording. So that is it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and seeing all of my purchases. I'm really excited about a lot of the prints that I purchased and a lot of the fabric for more cotton historical gowns. I know I used cottons for two 1840s dresses recently and really enjoyed the process of making them, so I'm excited to expand it to some other periods while using similar prints. Uh, this trip has left me feeling just so inspired and enthusiastic about fabric and eager to use up materials in my collection because I've got a lot of great fabric now. I always have, but it's just become more obvious to me, especially over the past week where I've been putting these materials away and reorganizing my collection. So I think I'm going to try and hold off on buying fabric for the next couple of months, uh, maybe until December. I've already unsubscribed to Joanne's coupons and the Fabric Mart newsletter, so I think I'm going to be doing a lot less online shopping and hopefully there won't be as much in-store shopping going on either. I'd really like to focus on the materials that I have and creating really wonderful things out of them. I'm even considering doing a stash busting challenge of sorts, maybe making five dresses in five days, or picking a quantity of material that I want to use up over a course of a month. If you're interested in that, then I'd be happy to hear more suggestions in the comment section down below, and I would also love for you to subscribe and stick around to see perhaps not more fabric hauls anytime soon, but more videos from me just in general. I'd also love to hear which was your favorite of the fabrics that I purchased and what your most recent fabric purchases are. I can't always respond to all of the comments, but I do really enjoy reading them and hearing a little bit more about what you're sewing and what you're interested in. So thank you again for watching, and I shall talk to all of you very soon.